Hello, my name is Juan Cabrera and I work as a field specialist in horticulture for the University of Missouri Extension Service. Today I'm going to talk to you about the features you need to look for when purchasing a new pH NEC meter. A quick disclaimer before I move on with the video. I will be featuring different devices of different brands for demonstration purposes. This should not be used as a basis for recommendation or preference by the University of Missouri Extension. Let's move on. Uh, before I begin talking about the features that you need to look for when choosing a meter, I want to address the following question. As a grower, do you really need to purchase one of these? They are an essential tool if you're growing crops hydroponically or if you're growing crops in container. They're also useful for other purposes such as making sure that you're mixing pesticides adequately. You can use this meter to test the pH and electrical conductivity you see of your soils at home or if you want to test the efficacy of lamming materials before purchasing them. However, you're better off sending a soil sample to our soil testing lab if you plan to use one of these once a year. A good meter will set you off between $100 to $300 uh, and they will last between one to two years. Compare that to a soil test, uh, which is around $12 as of 2020, and you only need to test the soil once every year or once every two years. The take home message or the TLDR version of what I said earlier is that they are a good investment if you plan to use them frequently. Now let's talk about features you're looking for when purchasing one of these devices. First, avoid using test strips. I mean, they are cheap and they are good to test clear water such as pool water samples or tap water samples. However, in agriculture, our samples sometimes are turbid waters or if you're using water-soluble fertilizers in greenhouses, most of them come with a dye. And this color and turbidity can set off the color change in the test strips and it will keep the wrong reading. So the ideal meter should be water resistant or waterproof. It should be tough and shock resistant. It should have these appendages so that it protects the electrodes from physical damage case of accidents and you should be able to replace the electrodes themselves in case something goes wrong with the electrode you only purchase this part so that you don't have to purchase the whole device again same with this other device here you only need to purchase the electrode in case something goes wrong with it they must be easy to calibrate and you should be able to find instructions that are clear and easy to follow. Uh, another one, and this is a big one, they need to have available customer support. And a way to test this before you buy this is try calling them and ask them for recommendations. They need to be portable, they don't need to be bulky, and they will have mainly two form factors in terms of portability. We have the pen style meters that are like pens and easy to carry around. And you have the more traditional meter, which is a handheld device that has the port where you can plug in the electrode. And the electrode comes with a long cable that you can reach uh, samples that are out of your reach. They sell them as combination meters. They measure pH, electrical conductivity, and temperature. Or you can buy them in which each one of these are measured separately in different meters. A good one, like I said earlier, it will set you off between $100 to $300. Avoid cheap meters with knockoff brands. The main reason why is because they will often sell you meters in which you cannot replace the electrodes in case you need to. Or if you're able to replace the electrodes, they're not available and it's really hard for you to find one. The other thing to look out for is available customer support. These knockoff brands, sometimes they have a phone number that leads to nowhere or they don't have any customer support. And sometimes when you buy things like off-brand things online, they come without instructions or if they come with instructions, they're really hard to follow. Now let's talk about maintenance and proper use. pH electrodes will last between one to two years if properly cared and maintained. Whereas EC or electrical conductivity meters should last between one and three years. Sometimes I've seen some that last longer than that. How do you know when you need to replace it? Sometimes the meter itself will give you readings that are way off or you will not be able to calibrate the meter. You'll have calibration errors or it will be impossible to calibrate the meter. 
that's when you need to consider replacing the electrode or the meter if you have a meter that you cannot replace the electrodes. So how do you make sure that your meter is in top notch shape? Well, you calibrate it. And like I mentioned earlier, over time, these meters will start to wear off. And as they wear off, they start to lose their sensitivity. So that's why you need to calibrate them to make sure that the electrodes are giving you the accurate readings. And remember, uh, good meters as good as the last time it was calibrated. You must be able to find calibrating solutions for the meters that you're buying. And there are multiple calibrating solutions out there. So how do you know which calibrating solutions to pick? As a point of reference, you want to pick calibrating solutions that are in the range of the pH values that you are expecting to see with your samples. For example, with agriculture, um, many of the samples are expected to be between 7 and slightly acidic. So you pick the pH calibrating solutions that are closest to those expected values. And that's why I picked uh, pH 4 and pH 7. Uh, same goes for electrical conductivity calibrated solutions. Uh, typically, there these are more robust uh, electrodes, and sometimes you only need one calibrating solution for that. And again, you have to pick a calibrating solution that is very close to the range of values that you expect to see with your samples. Now, how often you need to calibrate a meter? Ideally, you want to do it daily, but that's not practical and that's not sustainable from a business standpoint. So you want to do it every two to three days or every week, once a week. The other thing is how to properly store the pH electrodes. If you notice, the pH electrodes, they come with a liquid inside. And this is a pH electrode storage solution that you need to purchase. And this is a specific solution to store pH electrodes. And the reason why you need this solution is because this solution protects the integrity of the pH electrode. Do not store them dry unless specified by the manufacturer. And do not use regular water or distilled or deionized water to store the pH electrode. If you run into the situation that you need to store the pH electrode and you ran out of your storage solution, in the short time, you can use one of the pH buffer solutions to store it. And last but not least, avoid touching the electrode. Try not to use towels to dry it and always rinse the electrode with distilled or deionized water. So I hope that this video helped you clarify some doubts that you had about how to pick a meter. And if you have any questions, you can contact me. Here's my contact information. Or you can reach out to any of our horticulture specialists throughout the state.